Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. I'm Rob and today we're going to be taking a look at the F7XE in-dash car entertainment system that Atoto sent me to review. Before I get started with the review, I just want to let you guys know that I'm not a professional audio installation technician, nor am I affiliated with Atoto. So this video is just for entertainment purposes only. So if you've bought one of these or are considering purchasing one, Make sure you read through all the documentation that a total supplies with the unit and get help from a professional install tech if you are unfamiliar with how to do a job like this yourself. So here's a look at everything that comes in the box. First, of course, is the unit itself. And we'll look at this in more detail later in the video, of course, but overall you can see that this is a 7-inch unit and it's made to fit right inside my dash. There are some units available with larger screens, but the screens stick out and away from the dash. Now, I wanted the smaller unit for a cleaner installation, but if you want the bigger screen, you can definitely opt for it. Now, on this particular unit, there are some control buttons down along the bottom edge, and there are some inputs along the side, a USB, an SD card, and an external microphone. If I spin this around and we take a quick look at the side, you can see it's quite thin compared to the factory unit. And of course on the back are all the connections for inputs and outputs and we'll be talking a lot about that when I get to the installation part of this video. Now there's all kinds of documentation that comes with this kit and I suggest that you read through all of it before you get started with any kind of install or operation of this unit. And now along the back row here we first have a plastic bezel that goes around the face of the unit once it's installed, some metal brackets to help get it installed, a Wi-Fi antenna. Next we have the supplied wiring harness. This plug goes into the back of the unit down here and then the free end will connect up to a wiring harness kit that I bought for my vehicle which we'll take a look at in a minute. Over here we have a microphone so you can use voice command with this unit. Next we have a backup camera that I'm going to also install in my vehicle and then the wiring harness for the backup camera. So because the Atoto is an aftermarket radio I'm also going to need a wiring and installation kit to get this thing to fit in my Suburban. I did a little digging around on the internet and I found there's a bunch of different options that may or may not work with my Suburban. I decided that I would go with the installation kit from Crutchfield. Now the wiring harness I got is from PAC and the model number is here. And while I was on the Crutchfield site I decided to order the Metra installation bracket and bezel kit. I'll leave some links in the description below so you guys can see what I ordered, but because every vehicle is different, if you're considering this project, make sure that you do the research and get the installation kit that's right for your vehicle. Here's a quick look at everything that comes with the pack wiring harness kit. First, of course, is the control box, and this is the heart of the system. All these various harnesses plug into this. And this helps control things like the steering wheel control on star and work with my Bose amplifier. The kit also includes a separate chime module so that I have that available after I've installed the Atoto. And then there's a few different wiring harnesses to work with. This one should allow me to be able to use the drop down screen that's in the back seats. This of course is the main wiring harness and we'll be taking a look at that in a little bit. The kit also contains the antenna adapter that I'll need to connect my Chevy factory antenna up to the Atoto, and then another wiring harness over here that we'll take a look at later. Now there are detailed installation instructions on the PAC website, so I'm going to go over there and take a close look at those before I get started trying to wire any of this stuff up to the Atoto harness. So there's a few different ways to make all of the connections between the PAC harnesses and the Atoto harness. Now electrically, the best way to do this is to solder all the wires together and then put heat shrink tubing over each wire after it's soldered. I'm not going to do that just in case I want to take this thing apart or in case I get something hooked up wrong. Instead, I'm going to use these automotive style barrel connectors that you see here. Of course, there'll be links to these in the description below. You can order them on Amazon or get them at your local auto parts store. And as you'll see in a minute, there's just a male and a female end here that crimp onto either end of the wire, and then I can connect or disconnect them as needed. So I'm not gonna make you guys sit through all of this, but basically what I'm gonna do is remove these pre-stripped ends from each of the wires, and then crimp one of my terminals onto each one. I'll probably put all the males on the Atoto side, and I'll put all the females on the pack side. Not for any particular reason. So I've got all the barrel connectors crimped onto the wires and connected up where they're supposed to go. To figure out where everything needed to go, 
I used the instructions from the pack kit and cross-referenced them to the wiring chart that was wrapped around the Atoto harness. Now because this is sort of a universal kit, I do have a few spares that aren't used with my particular vehicle. So in those cases I have them capped off so that I don't have any shorting issues. The next thing I need to do is set the position of these switches on the side of the module. Now in the pack instructions, there is a chart to tell you which one of these needs to be turned on and which one needs to be off. Now in my case I'm using what is considered an other brand radio from the instructions, so I need to toggle switches 1, 2, and 3 on or down. I'm ready to start plugging in the white connectors that are on the pack harness into the pack box. Now these are all different size connectors and can only fit in one of the receptacles with one exception. The two receptacles over here are both the same size. If I look on the bottom of the unit, it tells me that one of the receptacles is used for a non-amplified system and the other one is used for an amplified. So since I have an amplifier in my car, I'm going to plug into this receptacle. This two-pin plug that's on the wiring harness plugs into the two-pin receptacle on the chime module. So for right now, I'm done making connections to the wiring harness. I'm going to set all this aside and bring in the radio and start putting on the mounting brackets. So in my case, I'm going to use the double DIN brackets that are supplied with the Atoto radio, and I'm going to mount them on either side. Each one is stamped with an L or an R, so you know which side it goes on. Now the plates are actually keyed to fit around the plastic brackets, and then there's holes that line up to the screws in the body of the radio. Now I can grab the small screws from the Atoto install kit, and screw down these side brackets to the radio. So next I've got the pieces from the Metra install kit, and I'm going to install those onto the Atoto. So I'll start off with the side pieces. Each one is stamped R or L for left or right, and I'm just going to install these on the side of the radio that matches with these tabs facing out. So just to figure out alignment, I put the front bezel over the radio, hooked it into the side bezel, and now I've got these slots aligned to where there's threaded holes in the metal Atoto bracket. Now that I've found three or four that I can line up to, I'm going to grab the screws that came with the Atoto radio and thread them in. I almost forgot to mention that this bezel orients on the radio so that the side with the single notch faces up or the top of the radio and the side with the three notches faces down. Now that the right side is on, I flipped everything over and I'll install the left side the same way. I left all the screws just a little bit loose so that I can make sure that the bezel is pushed down and aligned properly. Now that I've got it all set, I can tighten everything up. One final thing to mention before we head out to the car and start installing this is that this plastic filler piece that came with the Atoto radio isn't needed for the Metra bezel. This fits pretty tightly on the radio. But if yours has a gap, you may need to put this in before you install the bezel. So now that I've got all the wiring more or less set for the Atoto, it's time to get the old radio out of the car. The first thing I need to do is pop off this trim bezel. To pop this out, I'm going to use a small flat blade screwdriver. I'm going to gently put it in here between the trim plate and the dashboard. And I'm just going to pull out on this and then just kind of slide it over until I hit the first clip. Now that I've got that separated a little bit, I can bring in my spudger tool to get a little more leverage on here and start popping this out. Now the trick to getting this thing out of here without breaking it is to use the spudger tool behind the trim piece, find where the clips are, and try and apply as much direct outward pressure as possible. I'm just going to go slow, find all the clips, and work this out. Next, I need to remove the screws that are holding these panels in place. Now there's four that hold in the radio, but the panels below them sort of overlap, so these all have to be removed before the radio can be removed. So I've got a seven millimeter socket, and I'm just gonna pull out these screws now. To give myself plenty of room to work, I'm also gonna disconnect the wiring and set these panels completely aside. And now that the radio is physically out, I can disconnect all the wiring from the back. So here's a quick look at the old factory unit. As you can see, it's quite a bit bigger and heavier than the Atoto. Before I plug in any wiring, I just want to do a quick fit check just to make sure everything's going to work. As you can see, it looks like it fits and lines up, so I think we're good to go. The first thing I'm going to hook up is the Wi-Fi antenna. So I'm going to remove this little red dust cap from its connector. And then I'll grab the Wi-Fi antenna 
and screw this connector into the receptacle on the radio. Now this Wi-Fi antenna has an adhesive back and it's designed to kind of stick someplace. Now I thought about sticking it up here onto the dash, but then I'm kind of limited in my wire reach. But I'm going to stick it to the back of the radio so that I don't have to worry about this kind of coming in and out if I need to take the radio out again. The next item I'll install is the antenna adapter. This just plugs into the back of the Atoto here, and then the other end plugs into the factory receptacle here. This is the USB wire for the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, and this is permanently mounted to the back of the Atoto. I'm eventually going to route that down behind the dash, and we'll do that after. I'm just going to kind of fold it up and set it aside for now. Next, I'm going to plug the accessory microphone into this jack that's on the back of the Atoto, and for now, I'm just going to leave it bundled up here. Eventually, I'm going to need to route it up behind the dashboard. We'll do that in a minute. So next, I'm going to grab my wiring harness and start plugging it into the factory connections. The plugs and receptacles are all keyed, so they can only plug into one place. But I'm going to connect the black and the purple for now. The loose wiring harness with the RCA jacks plugs into the brown connector. And then I'll plug the white RCA plug into the port on the back of the total labeled sub. There's also a connection for the rear camera and a center channel speaker, but I'm not going to connect those up because I'm going to be using the aftermarket Atoto camera since my factory camera is broken and I don't have the center channel connection in this car. The yellow RCA plug that is labeled DVD Monitor 2 Video Input, I'm going to start off by connecting it to the V-Out 1 on the back of the Atoto. This should allow my rear screen to work with the radio. Now I'll grab the black plug on the Atoto harness and plug that in here on the back of the Atoto radio. Before I go any further, I'm just going to set this in the dash and power everything up to make sure I've got the connections correct. As you saw, everything powered up. It sounded like the chime was definitely working. That was nice and loud. I'm going to just play around with some settings here to check everything out and then we'll finish up the installation. So I've gone through and checked out the radio. Everything seems to be hooked up more or less correctly. All the speakers are functioning, the amp is functioning, the radio is working, some of the other options are also working. I spent some time trying to program the steering wheel controls and I've had sort of limited success. Got volume buttons working, but not everything. And that has more to do with me understanding the programming instructions for this module. Now that's out of the scope of this video, so I'm not gonna go into too much more detail on that, but I will spend some time playing around with this to get some of these other buttons working. The next thing that I'm gonna do is install the backup camera. Now that could probably be a whole video in itself, so I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about what I'm doing here, but I will give you the highlights. So the first thing I want to do is test out the camera, make sure it's working, and find a suitable position for it on the back of the car. So the first thing I want to do is plug the RCA jack that's on the camera harness into the rear camera port on the back of the Atoto, which is right here. Then I want to take the red wire that's attached to that harness, and I'm going to temporarily attach it to the 12 volt accessory wire. Now just for testing purposes, I'm just going to touch this wire in here so it's making connection to the metal. Eventually what I'll do is cut this plug off and splice both wires into this plug. Now what I'll do is activate the rear camera by turning it on from the radio. Now as you can see, we've got a view here. Let me show you where I've got it in the back. So on this Suburban, the factory camera is located right here underneath this Chevy emblem that's on this rear applique trim panel. Now about a year ago, the original factory camera failed. So I tried taking this all apart to fix that without any success. So all I have right here now is sort of a knockoff plate to block the hole. I thought about installing the Atoto camera in the old factory location because they look like they're about the same size and I think it would fit just fine in here. But removing this rear trim panel was such a problem that I don't want to go through that again. In addition to that, because the camera would be in this hatch that opens and closes, it would make running the wire just a little bit more difficult than if I could find a way to route the wires without having to go through the hatch. So what I decided to do is put the Atoto camera down here between the bumper and the trailer hitch. Now I think this position may actually work out better because it's mounted right here where the trailer hitch is, so it gives me kind of a better view to align any trailer hitches I need to hook up to, but still provides a wide enough field of view for backing up. And having the camera here allows me to run the wires under the car and not have to deal with figuring out how to run them through the hatch and into the inside. I've got the camera mounted right above the hitch on the bottom of the bumper cover. It was pretty easy to do. All I had to do was pull out on this, and it pulled it up just enough so I was able to get the screws on the bracket 
into the plastic. The wire for the camera runs up under the bumper cover and right now everything is still hanging because I'm not done wiring everything up. I am going to put some black tape around these connections to seal them up from the weather. The pink wire needs to be connected up to the backup light. So I routed it up underneath the bumper back here along the wiring for the tail light and spliced into the wire for the backup light right here. So the black wire that runs along with the pink wire needs to be connected to ground. You can see here I found a ground point just in front of the bumper. I put a ring terminal on the end of the wire and screwed it into that ground point. So now I'll run the free end of the wire up along the frame rail under the car and up to the front. There will be plenty of wire with this kit, even for a big car like this. Everything still looks like a mess here, but I wanted to show you guys where I ran the video wire. I ended up poking a hole in this grommet that goes through between the door and behind the firewall. I've actually got a ham radio antenna wire through the other end of it already, so I thought this would be a good spot to run it. Then the wire goes up underneath the dash and will eventually come out in back of the radio and plug in. The next thing I want to install is this USB extender. This will plug into the Android Auto cable on the back of the Atoto. And then this end right here will go and replace one of the cigarette lighter outlets that's on the dash. So to install the adapter, I first need to pop the cigarette lighter receptacle out of here. So to remove it, I just have a couple of clips in here that I can press on with the screwdriver and then I'll push sort of forward with my thumb and this should pop out. So this piece is a cover and I've slipped it over the end of the USB cable and I'll work this ring up over onto the USB receptacle. Now I'll send the USB cable through the opening in the dash panel. Now that I've got the USB plug installed, all I have to do is plug the other end into the USB cord that is attached to the radio. So I'm going to do a couple of last things before I shove everything in the dash and start reassembling. The first is I'm going to grab these open RCA plugs. I'm going to put some black tape on them so that if they touch anything metal, they don't cause any issues. I'll do the same for any free wires that are hanging around here just to make sure that nothing shorts. So I almost forgot about the microphone. You can see I've clipped it up here on the A-pillar and I ran the wire down underneath this trim behind the dashboard and underneath and into the back of the radio here. I ended up losing some of the footage from the reassembly, so I'm going to splice in some footage I shot from another project. After that, we'll start taking a look at how this thing works. Now in my case, since I had the radio out, I'm going to bolt that back in first. Now I'll bring the environmental control panel back in and bolt that in place. Now I can grab the accessory panel with the sockets on it and reconnect all the wires. And we'll get this positioned and bolted back in place. Now I can bring in the trim bezel and just push this back into place. So as you can see, the installation came out pretty good. Everything looks like it fits pretty nice in here and nothing looks out of place. Now, if I haven't mentioned it already, this Atoto is a Linux based system as opposed to an Android system. And all that really means is that we have sort of a limited subset of functions. And if you're like me, that's actually preferable over an Android system that allows you to kind of put almost anything on here. Really, the only things that are important to me are what are loaded in the Atoto. So I'm pretty happy with this unit. But if you need more functionality, you may want to check out one of Atoto's Android-based systems. Now, having said that, looking at the front panel, we've got the date and time displayed prominently here. And we've got probably the four most used buttons in any of these systems. Android Auto, the main radio tuner, Bluetooth audio, and Apple CarPlay. The button in the middle is used to dig into the rest of the apps. You can see on this screen, in addition to the stuff we already talked about, there is SiriusXM available if you buy the separate module. I don't have a subscription, so I didn't get that module. These options here will also light up and become active if I have a USB stick or a micro SD card to plug into one of the slots over here. So you can see from this menu, there are a handful of things we can dig into. If we take a look at system settings, you can see some kind of basic options here for language, turning on and off the beep tone, 
And then these options here are used for setting up the steering wheel controls. We can do a factory reset or we can take a look at the device and see what kind of software is loaded. To back up out of the menu tree, we just hit the back arrow here to go up. Looking at display settings, you can see we can change the dimming levels, daytime or nighttime. Panel key lighting can be changed to a few different colors, as you can see down here. I'm going to set mine back to blue. You can change the wallpaper on the radio to any one of these selected items, or I believe if you have an image loaded on your micro SD or your USB stick, you can pick from one of those images too. We have a video prohibition switch here, and then at the bottom we have boot logo selection. You can see there's a bunch of different manufacturer logos to choose from. Now, of course, because I have a Suburban, I chose the Chevy logo. Now, under the audio and EQ section, here's a look at what's here. We can change the balance and the fader, subwoofer controls, and we can enable audio in rear view. The very first option here, the EQ, will bring us into the equalizer, but this is also accessible from the button on the main menu. You can see in the equalizer, there's a handful of presets here that we can choose from, or you can set your own custom EQ if you want to. Under radio settings, there are a handful of options here to control the tuner behavior. And then under Wi-Fi settings, this is where we can set up the Wi-Fi connection between the phone and the Atoto. Same thing for Bluetooth. You can go in here to get your Bluetooth options set and pair up a phone if you want to use it via Bluetooth. And the last item on the menu tree is for setting camera options, either the rear camera or the front camera if you happen to have a second one installed. So speaking of the camera, there's a couple different ways we can access it. The first is by going into the menu page and clicking on the icon. You can see the camera turns on and we've got the rear view displayed here. And this can be turned on when you're moving down the road so you can keep a close eye on those tailgaters if you want to. To get back out of the camera, you just kind of swipe down and hit the home button. The other way to access the backup camera is to simply put the car in reverse. And you can see when it does that, the camera automatically clicks on after a second and we can see what's back there and we have the parking assist which can be configured in the menu tree. Once I shift back into park, the radio goes back into main mode. So now let's take a look at Android Auto and I can connect up to that by just plugging in my phone to the USB cable. You can see once it's connected up, Google Maps automatically starts and we can start navigating. Or I can push this button to go into any of the other options that Android Auto offers. But for me, the most important thing here was navigation. When we go on long trips, it's nice to have that right up on the screen so I can see it. And Google responds to all my voice commands like it would through my phone. Okay, Google, navigate to ARRL headquarters, Newington, Connecticut. Sure, American Radio Relay League. American Radio Relay League may be closed today. Okay, Google, stop navigation. Stopping navigation. So now, let's take a look at the radio feature in the Atoto. You can access that by pushing the purple button. You can see on the main part of the screen, the frequency is displayed here, and I can tune around by hitting these arrows or by using my steering wheel controls. Down along the bottom row, there are six presets that I can program by first tuning to a station that I want and then pressing and holding the button I want to program it into. Now for FM stations, there are three sets of memory banks that I can access and two for AM stations. In either FM or AM, the radio does have an automatic scan and program feature that you can access by pushing and holding this button. Over here, we can scan the programmed memories by pushing and holding that button. Then the radio will scan to each memory channel, stay there for a few seconds, and then move to the next. And then if I want to stop it, I just push that button again. In FM mode, we have a DX and local button so that if you're in the city where the signals are strong, you can switch over to local mode to prevent overloading. But I live out in the country, so I'm going to leave it on DX for the most part. Now the radio does display RDS data in the lines just above the frequency, as long as the signal is strong enough and the station is transmitting the data. 
I've had the Atoto F7 installed in my Suburban for about a week now, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's doing everything that I expected it to do and doing it well. I had one problem the first couple of days I was using this. The clock was resetting back to 1970 or just some random time and year. I played around with the settings and I found that I had turned on the automatic time setting function. That works by grabbing a time signal from a radio station. I don't have any strong radio stations around here, so the Atoto wasn't able to get a good time signal and got confused because of it. I turned that setting off and just set the clock manually and everything's been fine since then. But so far, that's really the only issue that I've seen. I'm really happy with the way everything else is working. As I mentioned earlier in the video, my factory backup camera quit about a year ago. Now, when I priced out replacing that factory backup camera, I found that it was gonna cost almost $500. But for less than half of the price of just that backup camera, the Atoto system offers the backup camera that I wanted, plus the head unit that allows me to do things like Android Auto, hands-free calling, and Bluetooth connections. Another thing I like is that this fits right in the dash cleanly as if it were a factory unit. Now having said that, if you're looking for a bigger screen and aren't so worried about the factory look of the dashboard, Atoto does offer several different models with bigger screens that you can consider. I like the fact that I can plug my phone directly into this wire, connect up to Android Auto, and charge the phone at the same time, or use the wireless connection if I'm not worried about charging the phone or maybe have left my cable in the house. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is a Linux-based system, so it has sort of a limited feature set when compared to an Android-based system. Now for my needs, that's perfect. There's nothing here that I don't want and everything that I do. But if you're looking for more functionality, Atoto does offer Android-based units that you can consider. Overall, these Atoto units are an affordable way to upgrade an old car like this Suburban to have modern functionality, or like in my case, fix something that broke. If you wanna learn more about this Atoto unit or any of the other units that they offer, check below for some links. Now, if I can pass on any discounts or savings, I'm gonna do that down there too. Also, I'll have links to the other items that I used in this installation. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.